Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're looking at contactors again, and uh, this time we're going to have a look at how they're used to control pieces of machinery. And this might be sort of workshop type equipment, such as drills or lathes or that kind of thing. And it's fairly common to have these uh, controlled via a contactor, because they could just have a normal on-off switch. This has a couple of major disadvantages. One of which is that to turn the thing off, you've only got that single switch, so you have to sort of uh, get to wherever that is and uh, reach the switch and turn it, which if it's some kind of emergency situation, of course that's not uh, particularly desirable. And the other problem with just having a normal on-off switch is if there was a power failure while the machine was in operation, then of course it would stop working, and then people might go out to lunch or something and think there's uh, nothing else to do. And of course if the power then came back on, if you've got a normal switch in place, then the machine is going to start working of its own accord, and obviously that's definitely not desirable either, because uh, no one might be around and it could cause all kinds of damage and destruction. So uh, contactors are often used for this purpose, and uh, chiefly so that you can have uh, one or more emergency stop buttons located in various places, and also to make sure that if the power is disconnected, the machine won't automatically start unless someone's actually gone in and specifically pressed the start button. Now I've seen contactors in a previous video, so if you haven't seen that one, then I uh, recommend to go watch that one first so you need to know what contactors are. But in their simplest form it's just a set of switches which are operated by a magnetic coil. So when the coil is energised the switch or set of switches is closed. Now in the uh, simplest form a contactor will have just a single switch. So I'll just draw that in here. And as well as switch there of course it would have the uh, magnetic coil. So I'll just draw that in like that. So when the coil is energised, uh, this uh, contact here will close. And uh, if you, say, got a single phase motor, say for a uh, drill or something uh, like that, some sort of small piece of machinery, then uh, you only actually need the one contact. Although, of course, you could have two, so you could switch the line and neutral. But uh, one is actually all you need for this. And uh, this would be the line conductor, so you'd have uh, power coming in and then power coming out, which would go to the machine that you've got. And we can draw in the neutral as well here. So this will go out to your machine. So when this is energised, this is closed, and therefore the machine actually operates. So nothing too surprising about that. I'll just put the machine in there, and the supply up there. But uh, of course this isn't particularly useful, because we may as well just stick in a normal switch. This hasn't really achieved anything. So what we need to do is to arrange a method here so that we can actually power the machine via the actual supply that we've got coming in. So we can actually get a contactor with a 240 volt coil, and of course the machine would also be 240 volts as well. So what we need to do is to power this coil from the very same supply that's actually coming in, so that uh, we can obviously use the same voltage for both. We don't need a separate transformer or separate supply there. Now, of course, in this state, the uh, coil is not powered because it's not connected. And if we just connected this to the incoming supply, that wouldn't really achieve a lot because then basically it would be on permanently. It wouldn't have any control. So what we need to do is to connect this coil here to the output side of the contactor or the switch so that the coil is only receiving power when this switch is closed. And this side of the uh, contact here, we'll go back to the uh, neutral supply, as with the rest of the equipment. Now, of course, this isn't very useful either, because at the moment the coil is not powered, and the only way to get it powered is to close this switch, but the only way to close this switch is to power the coil, so of course we're not really going to get anywhere. So what we need to add in is a start button, which will temporarily connect power to this piece of equipment. And uh, what we do here is to actually connect from here and just put another switch in here, which temporarily bypasses the one for the motor. So uh, in the default position there's no power, but if we press this button, this would typically be the uh, green start button, this will uh, be temporarily connected, of course the machine will start running, but more importantly this coil will then be energised, which will close this contact, and then the thing will stay closed permanently, so even when the switch is released, this is closed and it's powering the actual uh, coil and the machine at the same time. So that has achieved uh, sort of what we wanted in that just a short press of this switch causes the machine to start and stay running. 
And in this case, uh, say it's just a single phase machine, so only switching the one contact. You could switch the neutral as well if you wanted, and many machines have that arrangement. Now this will continue going for as long as the power remains connected, and if there was, say, a power failure, then of course this coil won't be powered anymore, and neither will the machine, and the contact will open. But crucially, when the power is returned, the coil won't be powered because, again, this contact's open, so you have to actually go and again press the start button here to link that across to actually get the thing started. And in terms of actually uh, providing a stop function without just uh, sort of pulling the plug or whatever, then all you need to do is to add in another switch, and we can put the switch in here. And this will be a normally closed switch, so this would be the uh, stop button here, and that would be the start in there. So that uh, whilst this is closed, of course, power can uh, flow through here in the normal fashion, but uh, as soon as this is actually opened, which would again be pressing the uh, button, normally a red button, then it disconnects power to the coil, this contact then will open, and of course the motor is then disconnected and doesn't work. And even when this is released, again, the motor can't actually be started until we press the little start button there, so the power can actually temporarily power the coil. The coil closes the contact. Now this is of course all very well for a single phase machine. Disadvantage to this arrangement is that this switch here has to actually be capable of taking the full load of whatever the machine is. And again, if it's only a small motor or something then not a particular problem, but of course if you had a much more powerful machine this would have to be a huge great big press button, probably capable of taking sort of 20, 50 amps or something. So uh, this is typically only used on very small pieces of equipment, certainly uh, not anything of large size. But if you buy say a sort of a pillar drill or something, or some of those cheap things for only a fairly low price, then uh, this is a fairly common sort of arrangement it will have. The box itself generally fixed on the side, and typically it's just got the two buttons, and it's generally start and stop, and so typically it's green for start and red for stopping. Now for a three phase machine then it's generally done somewhat differently, so if we have our three phases coming in here, one, two and three, and then we've got our contactor here with the three separate contacts inside, and then our machinery or whatever would connect here. And three phase would typically be a 400 volt piece of equipment. And as we saw in the previous contactor video, it's fairly common to get contactors with four terminals, so three of which would be used for switching the actual machine load, a three phase motor in this case. And then you can use your fourth contact, which we'll draw here, which can be used for a control circuit. Now, uh, this is pretty much the same as we had with the uh, single phase thing there, in that uh, we're going to have the coil for the relay. I'll just draw that uh, over here like that. And we're going to have some kind of power supply for this. Now, this could be the same voltage as these, or it's quite often the case that it's not the same one. It might, say, be a uh, 24 volt circuit like that. We're going to have a switch in here, which will be normally in the closed position, and this will be the off button. So that uh, if the coil is energised, all of these contacts are closed, so the motor is of course running, and this one is also closed, and that's what keeps the power going through the coil. When you press the off button, it actually is breaking the circuit here, disconnecting power from the coil, and then it's opening the contacts over here. Now of course to start the thing we also need a temporary way of starting it, and the on button would actually fit again across the contact there. And that would be your on button. So in the default state with no power, all these contacts are open, motor isn't running, and this is open as well, so there's no power to the coil. All we've got here is our 24 volts uh, just sort of sitting there waiting to be used. So to start the machine running, press the on button which links this through temporarily, so power can then flow via there through the coil. Coil is energised, which means all of these contacts will close, so uh, your motor then will start running because your power is coming through here. This contact will close, which means that the power then for the coil can continue through this contact here, so even if you don't uh, actually hold the button down, then it will still remain turned on. 
because this is only used temporarily just to bypass that contact. And so that will actually continue running pretty much forever. To switch it off, you're going to press your off button here, which will break this connection here temporarily. Again, remove power from the coil. That will cause the motor contacts to open, and also the uh, fourth one here. So you've basically broken the circuit. And then even if you release this button, and it then obviously closes, again, because this is still open, then there's no power going by the relay actual coil here. So the motor, of course, won't switch on. And the same thing would apply if there was a power failure. So power here has uh, disappeared because the fuse is blown or something. Again, the coil is de-energised, all the contacts open. And even if the power is then subsequently restored, the only way to get it going is by pressing the on button. So you're not going to have machinery starting up and switching on when people don't want it to. Now I've just uh, redrawn this here with a bit of extra space. Because as well as having the off button, say, on the front panel, so a little uh, control panel with, say, off and on, buttons on the front. Because uh, all you need to do, is do to stop the thing working is to break the circuit, what you can have here are a whole load of other switches. And again, these will be normally uh, in the closed position. So let's draw some of those in here. And these could be additional sort of emergency stop type buttons located, say, elsewhere on the machine, or some can have like a floor thing where if you like, press a pedal on the floor in front of it, it will cut power to the device, or even on the wall or across the other side of the room if you wanted to. And you can have as many of these as you want. The important thing is that any one of these can break the circuit and then will cut power to the machine. And all you've got to do is simply extend the circuit around, wire all the switches in series, and unless all of the switches are in the closed position, it's uh, not possible to actually start the thing going. And if it's already going, any one of these being opened will cause the whole thing to be disconnected and switch off. And again, this is fairly common with uh, workshop type machinery, where you may well have the buttons on the machine, but it's useful to have, say, a uh, larger button, or in some cases, a sort of a bar or something you can press or lean against or whatever to cut power in the event of something going wrong. And another piece of equipment which is often used, particularly for motors, is a um, thermal overload. And this would fit in here. I bet it's a uh, device where the wires for the motor will actually go through. So the current is actually going through the uh, overload device and then your machine would attach over here. And these generally work on a thermal principle, so the current going through basically causes a heating element inside to heat up. And these are generally adjustable and selectable for the particular motor in question. And these are mechanically connected to a switch, which is outside of the box there, but it's obviously part of the same device. So that if the current flowing through here is too great for too long a period, this thing will heat up and the mechanical part there will basically open a switch here, and again that breaks the same circuit as the rest of it. So if the motor is stalled and use excessive current, this would heat up, this switch here would open, and that would cut the power to the same control circuit, disconnect power from the motor, and stop it setting on fire and being destroyed. And you can get these, they actually quite often are just basically plugged onto the bottom of the contactor, so it's all sort of part of the same device, although you can get them to be wired in separately. But it's exactly the same principle, same control circuit, it's just breaking the circuit via a mechanical link here, which is basically from a sort of a heating duct device, or you've got your various uh, emergency stop buttons around the room, or the actual button itself on the front of the machine. So uh, you can actually attach a lot of stuff to these, and again it doesn't have to be 24 volts, it could be whatever voltage you happen to want. 24 is fairly common for control circuits. So let's look there at uh, what's normally called no volt release or NVR, which means when there's no voltage the relay will open or the contact will open and disconnect the circuit. And the crucial point about that is well that uh, once the power's been disconnected, even if you reconnect the power, the motor doesn't actually start running unless someone actually goes and presses that start button. And uh, the emergency stop type of thing, again, is uh, quite often required in many circumstances, so you have uh, one or multiple stop buttons which you can locate in easily accessible places because a lot of machinery though it has the main sort of on and off button on it in the event of someone getting trapped in the machine or some other misfortune occurring you don't want to be sort of groveling up some little tiny button so you have a generally large thing you can just press or bang in and that will disconnect power to the machine and with that circuit you can wire in as many of those as you want 
it doesn't uh, actually matter, you can have them uh, all over the place on the wall or say even across the other side of the room or possibly disconnect power to an entire area. Now of course there are many other ways of uh, connecting motors, particularly those that start in uh, one configuration and uh, switch over to another, but uh, we may have a look at that at a later time. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.